Hi, my name is David, and today I'll be talking to you guys about how to solve the period of pendulums. I will begin this lecture by talking about how to solve and find the period of an ideal pendulum. An ideal pendulum is as something I am currently drawing on the paper. It is simply composed of a string with a mass attached at the end. Of course, there are two assumptions to this, and those are that the string is massless, and that the mass at the very end is a point mass. As you can see from the full body diagram, there are two forces acting on the point mass at the very end of the string. It would be force of tension and force of weight. Force of tension, of course, being held uh, theta from the normal, as because the pendulum is being held theta degrees from the normal, which is perpendicular to the ceiling. Furthermore, it is interesting to note that this point mass, or rather the force of weight of this point mass, has two components to it. It would be the force of weight perpendicular and force of weight parallel. Now, for the purposes of this problem, we only care about force of weight perpendicular because force of weight parallel and force of tension are negating forces. The force of weight perpendicular, or the sum of the forces, is basically the force of restoration. It's what pulls the pendulum back into equilibrium position and past the equilibrium position and then back towards equilibrium and so on and so forth, creating an oscillation. So we have the sum of the forces equaling the force of restoration, which is equal to negative force of weight perpendicular, equals negative force of weight sine theta. It's negative because the force is trying to pull it back from its current direction or uh, traveling direction. Now, negative force of weight sine theta is also equal to negative force of weight x over L. This is because, or at least in my notation, that x is the base of this, so, uh, of this triangle and L is the length of the string, so we get opposite over adjacent. Now, because it's the sum of the forces, we can re rewrite this as being mass times acceleration is equal to negative mg over L times x. And by simplifying, we get A is equal to negative g over L times x. Now, recall that I said earlier in this lecture that this is an oscillation problem. It's, there's some forces that are trying to pull it back to equilibrium, past, and then it goes past equilibrium, and then it wants to go back to equilibrium. So I th the oscillation equations are completely applicable to the situation. So force of oscillation is equal to negative kx, and using sum of forces again, we get that ma is equal to negative kx, but really this is a differentiable equation, which is m double derivative of x with respect to t is equal to negative kx. Now, if we solve this, we get that x as a function of t is equal to the maximum value, the amplitude, the maximum value of x, times cosine omega t plus phi, phi being the phase displacement. If we take the derivative of this, we get the velocity oscillation equation, and then what we want is the derivative of the velocity equation, which is a t is equal to negative omega squared x max cosine omega t plus phi. Plugging back the equation we just quickly but quickly derived back into the equation we had earlier before, that is um, that acceleration is equal to negative g over l times x. We discover that uh, omega squared x max cosine omega t plus phi is equal to g over l times x. Now, the x and the x max are actually the same because we're dropping it from the maximum displacement. And cosine w t plus phi is actually equal to 1 because, well, this is the maximum. Therefore, we're, what we're left with is omega squared is equal to g over l. Therefore, solving for omega, we get that omega is equal to square root of g over l. Now, we also know that t is equal to 2 pi over w, or t pi over omega. So plugging in our found value for omega, we discover or derive that the period of an ideal pendulum 
is equal to 2 pi times root L over G. This technique uh, that we just used to find the period of an ideal pendulum is something that we will be using once again to find the period of a physical pendulum. A physical pendulum is quite different from that of an ideal pendulum in that the two basic assumptions we made in solving the ideal pendulum problem are no longer true. That is, that the string is no longer massless and that all the mass is no longer contained at a single point at the very end of this pendulum. Instead, as somewhat demonstrated in my diagram, that I'm, is, uh, we can see that the force or that the force of weight protruding from the, this plank or rod is actually coming out from the center of mass, and that the length is from the axis of rotation to the center of mass. Um, to solve this physical pendulum problem, we said that the torque of restoration is equal to negative torque force of weight. Remember that we are using torque as opposed to force. Otherwise, the process we will be using is actually quite similar to that of an ideal pendulum. Using our knowledge of torques, we can um, rewrite that our torque restoration equations to uh, moment of inertia times angular acceleration is equal to negative force of weight times L times sine theta. The small angle theorem is very helpful in continuing to solve this problem. A small angle theorem states that for any given small value of theta, we, ha we can say that the cosine of theta is equal to 1, or the sine of that same theta is equal to about theta. So going back to this equation we had earlier of torque, we can restate this as being moment of inertia times angular acceleration is equal to negative mgl theta. And dividing through, we get the angular acceleration is equal to negative mgl theta over moment of inertia. Now we also know that the angular acceleration is equal to linear acceleration times r. And therefore, we have that a is equal to negative mgl over i times theta over r. Theta over r, by using our knowledge of trigonometry, is simply uh, x or the maximum horizontal displacement. Therefore, going back to the equation we used previously, the oscillation equation that is, and the one that we just found, we can set them equal to each other just as we did in the ideal pendulum scenario. Therefore, we have that negative mgl over moment of inertia times x is equal to negative omega squared x maximum cosine omega t plus phi. The x is once again canceled because the pendulum is being dropped from its maximum height, and because it's the maximum height cosine, the ex cosine expression is equal to 1. Therefore, we, simplifying all of our equations, we get that omega squared is equal to mgl over i, and omega is equal to square root of mgl over moment of inertia. Thus, the period being 2 pi over omega becomes 2 pi times square root of the moment of inertia divided by mass times gravity times length. It would be quite helpful to see a problem being solved using our uh, equation that we just derived on the physical pendulum. So here's one. You have a rod of length L and the rod is being held by one end and it will be dropped or it will, and it will be swung. So we have that the mass of this rod is equal to 7.00 kilograms and the length, the entire length is equal to 2.10 meters. Furthermore, the period is equal to 2 pi times square root of I over MGL as we derived and it is also very helpful to know that the moment of inertia of a rod is equal to one-third ml squared. So plugging in all of our information that we know, we get that period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of one-third ml squared over mgl, which is basically the same as saying 2 pi times square root of l over 3g.
we know that L is equal to 2.1 nanometers and G is 9.8 because we are on Earth. Therefore, we can once again rewrite this as 2 pi uh, times square root of 0.7 divided by 9.8. Using our calculator to solve, we get that the period is equal to 1.68 seconds. Thank you for watching this video on how to solve pendulums, and I hope you have learned quite a bit.